Hello, everyone. My name is Yao Welch, and you're watching the Venom Now Blading podcast. This is episode 29, and it's going to be with Robert Guerrero. Unfortunately, Robert Guerrero is having trouble getting on the live stream. So let's see if he's able to connect or not. I did want to go over some channel news with you today. I do have ep uh, episode 30 of the podcast will be happening in two weeks with Jason Howard. And that's going to be happening uh, on, let me see, what day is that? It's going to be November 7th will be episode 30 with Jason Howard. And he's a good friend with Robert Guerrero. So it's a nice follow-up to this interview. Also, uh, some of you have seen the show, Let's Talk Rollerblading. I've done a couple episodes with Frank Stoner. This is a new concept that I've changed with the show. Every episode I show, we're going to be discussing five different topics about rollerblading stuff. And I, me and my guests will discuss those topics. So. One of the next guests I'm going to have is Lawrence Ingram, and me and him have a long history together. We both ran zines in the 90s, which talking about zines back in the day will be one of those topics. Uh, I'm going to have Frank Stoner on again for that show on Halloween for a little Halloween special. If you have any guests you'd like to see on Let's Talk Rollerblading, and if you have any topics you'd like to see on Let's Talk Rollerblading, make sure and leave those in the comments below. Now. Robert Guerrero is MIA. His, his uh, audio wasn't working on his iPad, and he was supposed to get on with his phone, and I do not see him yet. So, not sure. Here he is. <laughs> He's here. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I'm... Everyone, welcome Robert Guerrero to <laughs> the podcast. I got episode turn... 29. <laughs> So what happened, Robert? The audio wasn't working on your iPad? Yeah, I, I have no idea why. Man, I really don't like this kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, I feel you. I've been doing this for a while now, and it's always a pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, and luckily, like, 80% of the shows go off, like, good right mm -hmm. away. But you're in that 20 percentile. Nice. That. But then we watched the, the we did that episode. Um, we watched your footage together. No, we did that live. The last, the only thing we did was the face to face. Which, if you're just tuning in for this podcast, this episode is going to be a little bit different from the other podcasts because we're not going to revisit Robert's entire life and career in relating. <laughs> we did that already on this channel for episode one of Face to Face. I have a link to that in the description below. Robert and I actually sat down in person. I talked about his past and our past together in a Quebec, actually, at his friend's house where we were staying. So that mm -hmm. episode is on his channel. What this episode, 29, is going to be about, it's going to be about what Robert's been up to since we did that last interview. He spent the entire summer in Europe doing rollerblading stuff. Lots of cool <laughs> Lots things. of rollerblading stuff. <laughs> yeah, so Not that's going to be really exciting to hear about. Um, I had before you got on finally, I'd mentioned that the next podcast is going to be with Jason Howard, and mm -hmm. that's one of your old, oldest blading homies. He, he's probably the only like the oldest friend I have in my life. That's amazing. So uh -huh. he's next on this, and I like I mentioned, it's down in the below, it says Jason Howard, Monday, November 7th. So everyone, make sure and subscribe to his channel, hit the bell icon so you get notified when that goes live so robert i want to i guess we'll catch up to what's been happening with you so last time we talked well you had just come to quebec you're staying in quebec with one of your friends like a mutual friend Mathieu Ledeau. um i guess let's go back to why uh, why you ended up in quebec in the first place again because you had taken like a small break from skating and from social media or at least being in the spotlight of it, you know, like um, socially, right? I, uh, yeah, I was, I went to hang out with a friend on the East Coast. Oh, wait, are, are we talking about like exactly where I was before? No, not where you were, but like, um, you know, before you went to the East Coast, like you had taken a break from skating, right? Like for a little while from social media and everything. Uh, I, I didn't take a break from skating, but I, I definitely was not, 
in the kind of like mind state of like trying to post things and get clips and and all that kind of stuff. But I was actually skating every day. And you like deleted everybody off your social media, right? At some point. Yeah, because I I have such I'm having like such like a conflictive experience with the whole just what's happening right now with the whole digital stuff and social media and <laughs> I so you've been posting quite a bit lately since you or a lot more than you have in the past. <laughs> Which was like twice. <laughs> yeah, but I've been following your trips. Your trip in Europe oh, yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. You posted enough to keep me interested. Yeah. Um, and you play and you post some good throwback clips and photos and stuff of yourself oh, yeah. which yeah. is fun to check out um you can follow robert on instagram it's robert earth right robert yes it is um okay so you know what you were right i t i didn't skate for a month there was a month where i didn't skate well that's not too bad i mean i think a lot of people uh have taken a month off skating in their lifetime yeah yeah but then i on the summer i went like full on and now if i don't skate for like a couple of days i just like feel it and that month you took off was right before you came out to quebec that's when you stayed in the east coast yes skating yes i was with uh juan Mosqueda. And in Quebec, you skated a little bit. Uh, I know Mathieu was out of town. You skated at the park. I went up there and skated with you a couple of times. Uh huh. You were also in your phase of figuring out what skates you wanted <laughs> and what size <laughs> skates you should be wearing because you always kind of squeezed your feet into smaller skates. So oh, we God. kind of worked on that together with you. Uh, I brought some different skates up for you to try out. You tried out the Aeons. You tried out the Icons. And then you ended up yeah. liking the Aeons, and you got a pair of the Lomax Aeons. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really love this skate. I think it's incredible. Are you still riding the uh, the stock wheels on there, or have you gone through them already? Um. Well, I have a new pairs now, so I'm. Um, but I did ride the stock wheels for a long time, actually. That were on those. Um, cool. I've got I've got some new pairs though right now. So Power Side's been hooking you up with skates, huh? Yeah, you know Matthias has always uh, like supported me with skates whenever I've asked for like probably over like twenty years now. So what are you on now besides the Aeon sixties? Um, so I have the Sam Crofts and I have the eighties. What's the Sam Crofts? The, they have, they're the white, they're like, the, they have the black shoe top. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I know what they look like. What's, what size What size wheels do they take? 60. 60, okay, so you're in the Sam Crofts and the 80s. So how's the 80s? Have you been skating those at the park or cruising around on them? Uh, yeah, last, I'm actually, I've been super fucking tired all day because I, after skating the skate park yesterday, I went and cruised through the city last night for like three hours straight. Sick. Um, when I was in Spain, I was doing that like whenever I could on the skates because they're just like great for cruising. Um, I don't even really think about grinding at all when I'm on them. Um, and I just have fun just like going super fast and you know, dodging and weaving through the streets. Oh yeah, it's so fun to do that with a yeah. big wheel setup. And the Drummondville is pretty nice because it's pretty flat. Um, yeah. There's lots of trails and there's some you know cool stuff you can check out there. Uh, and it's you hadn't really done too much like big wheel blading, you know, regularly in the past, right? Uh, not not like consistently. Um, but. That's not completely true because in the last year, I was actually making it a point to do a lot of just like neighborhood cruising. Like I used to do like freaking when I began, when I was living in Mopitas, I was doing that at least like every other day. I wasn't aware of that. That was, were you on 
Which skates we got back on? I had some uh, twisters actually. Okay. And yeah, that's what I'm skating now is the Twister XTs. They're actually, they modified them from the Twisters you skated, and they're really, really nice. Really? They yeah. they look nice. They're like the best looking skate I think Rollerblade has. <laughs> I might have to. I haven't made it back up to Quebec yet to visit you. Uh, hopefully, I can do that. And if I do, I will bring the Twisters up with me. Yeah, do so that. So you can adjust <clears throat> my... Oh, oh, no. Sorry, guys. I just <laughs> messed my phone. <laughs> is my camera and I just close oh, yes. the thing. Be right back, everyone. Here we go. All right. Sorry about that. Look at all these technical difficulties. I was just trying to adjust it a little bit. All right. Perfect. Okay. So before we get into your Europe talk, Launder has a question, which okay. I'm not sure what this is. And it says, Have Rob talk about helping a lady move the fridge on his skates. Oh, I, yeah, I can actually better talk about that right now. So I was at the skate park here, you know, the one that's here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was skating this area with this skateboarder. And we were just like sessioning at the same time. And then all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, this woman just comes from like the street. And she just is like walking towards me and she walks straight up to me and she just starts talking French. And I was just like, I'm sorry, I don't speak French. <laughs> and then she just went like, well, blah, blah, blah. like, you know, that's not what French sounds like, but she started speaking French again. And then she just walked away. And then I turned to the skateboarder dude and I was like, do you know what she said? And then he said, yeah, she was asking if you could help move her refrigerator. And then I was like, oh, I could do that. So I went back to her and I basically was able to share that, yes, I could do that. And then I said, where? And then she pointed across the street and she looked at me super funny because I had my skates on. And she looked at me like, you know, like, what are you going to do? You got to take your skates off kind of look. And I just jumped up, jumped up on one of the ledges and then jumped off just to like show her that I was like, I knew what I was doing with my skates. That's and really then, funny. yeah. And then I skated across the street to where the refrigerator was. And by this time, the skateboarder also came and I started to, pick up the refrigerator and I had one part of it with my skates on and the skateboarder had the other part. And then we walked up like four stairs and then there was a whole nother set of stairs going up to the second floor. But, but the floor was like carpet. Uh, so I was just laughing. I was laughing so hard the, how, the whole time. And the woman was also just, I think she just couldn't believe I was doing this with skates on. But it was so funny. I mean, like, I'm funny. control on my skates, so I know what I'm doing. I mean, she asked you to do it while you had your skates on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, we, we brought it all the way up to the floor, dropped it off, and then walked down. And I'm thinking, like, okay, I'm going to go back to the skate park now. And then the lady said, like, hey, 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 hey. And then she just walked away. And I was like, huh? And then I turned to the skateboarder and I said, do you speak good English? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, what is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he was like, she wants, she wants to give us $10. <laughs> Take $80. And, that's like seven Euro, US dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I kind of just want to go back to the skate park, but I didn't, I, I don't know. It was just kind of a really cool moment. And I kind of wanted to let it like fully kind of play itself out. <laughs> so she gave him a $5 bill and then she gave me $5 and change. <laughs> That's crazy. And then <laughs> five yeah, and change. Yeah. yeah That's awesome I, though. That's a great story. Yeah. It was, it was a really cool moment actually. Like and that, I really, that was just like this past since you've been back. What's that? That just happened since you've been back in Canada? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was like maybe a couple weeks ago. 
All right. Yeah. Cool. That's a really funny story. I mean, I, I really love these kind of like uh, rollerblading social interaction mm -hmm. happenings because I'm always interested in like what people think of rollerblades and people on rollerblades and how they respond and how they react. So it was really, it was a really cool moment. So that's, awesome. that's, that's what happened. Well, good question, Launder. Thank yeah. you for that one. That was a great story. If anyone else has any questions for Robert, we will answer some questions, even if they kind of go outside of uh, <laughs> his current, his current travels and so forth. And I want to thank everybody who's on here. We got Vinny, Launder, Megan, <laughs> Tree, uh, Emini, uh, and Dude. Nathan Moore, Barrett Woodward, all sorts of people in the house. And you just saw Imani, right? In, in Montreal a few yeah. weeks ago. You went there with you. What were you guys doing in uh, Montreal? We just met up to skate the skate park. And the concrete park? or Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was super, it's a crazy skate park, but it's really cool. Um, yeah. And Emily is filming his vault tour video right now. Did you get any clips for it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Emily knows. Emily can let us know. Uh, he's in the, in the, in the chat. Uh, I was just in Montreal this weekend myself uh, with Megan skating. So that was a lot of fun. You now, were? Yeah. We spent, uh, stayed in a hotel and spent two days there. Um, she she it was kind of a late birthday you know trip uh but i'd like to get up to you sometime soon how much longer are you going to be in quebec i'm actually trying to decide that right now so you if you're going to come you should probably as soon as possible yeah all right well maybe i'll come this week it's supposed to be nice okay uh, yeah well, yeah let's... that's actually what i heard today too i heard today today was a little rainy but then i heard the rest of the week supposed to be really good all right, so that's a plan. I'm going to go to Quebec this week and visit Robert. And okay. I'll bring some different skates up for you to try out, too, since that seems like a good pattern of us hanging out up there. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, well, so let's get into your travels. So, you know, you spent earlier this year in Quebec for like a month or so. Mm -hmm. and, and then you left for Portugal first. That's the first place you went, right? Uh-huh. And you went there to stay with Ricardo Lino. Now tell me about like how did that trip come together? Did you contact Ricardo? Um, he invited you out. I had I had been I had been in communication with Ricardo for I think probably like years talking about wanting to come out. And um, I don't know exactly how it began in, in contact with ricardo in the beginning but we started talking and then he basically just told me hey just get out here and everything will happen and i was like okay so i just pulled the trigger and i bought the ticket and that was the first step was just going there and i didn't i mean i had a loose plan of what could happen after that like we had talked about um, right but nothing Nothing was set in stone. It was only just like go there. So what we had talked about is you're going to go to Portugal, Spain, and Poland, and you did go to all those places. So yeah. you did follow the plan. Yeah, I did. <laughs> now going to Ricardo. Ricardo has got to be interested to visit because Ricardo is you know full time YouTuber, right? He has his little skate park. Um, they do the shop. What was it like? Did, like, and he has the and he has like the the, like, the dorms at the skate park too. Did you stay at the skate park or did you stay at his house? Um, he has an extra room um, downstairs also, and that's where I stayed because at the same time there was like so much stuff going on. Like there was a Barbie patin workshop. And then the Rosie's team came and they were all staying there. Um, so I stayed actually with him and his family. And how was that? He has these, some young kids, right? And yeah. And they skate and there's the hit. Ricardo's incredible, dude. That's his really whole, cool. His whole family is amazing. Um, I basically, yeah, I was with him and his family for like a month straight. And 
um, wow, I was skating every single day. Um, Ricardo obviously works every single day, but his office is in his warehouse where the skate park is. So oh, perfect. So he's like working all day and he's in his office, but I'm just like right there chilling and skating also. Um, Sounds and like a dream setup. It, it really is, dude. It really is. It really is. Um, That's really cool. Now, yeah. I saw that, you know, almost right away, he threw you on some quads and you were skating on some Kaya quad skates at the skate park. Yeah. Was well, that your first he, time on, on those? I mean, he didn't he didn't throw me into some quads. Right. Like I knew it was happening because of Barbie's workshop. And I wanted to get comfortable with them because I wanted to join the workshop. Okay. Um and I came back from like a session. I think this is how when I came back from like a rollerblading session and was like, okay, I'm going to skate the park now with these quads and get used to them. And they're kind of tight on my feet. So that kind of hurt, but I skated them for like, I think like three hours straight. Um, and they were, I found them like really easy to do rollerblader tricks on, I guess you could say. Um, and so I just went at it for like, like I said, like three hours straight. And I couldn't even roller skate in the, the um, I couldn't even roller skate in the uh, workshop the next day because I was too sore. Oh, really? <laughs> well, and the skates were done not the right size. Right. Yeah. So did you only skate them a f that, those few times then? Or did you skate them more than that when you were down? No, that, 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 was, that was my first time. Okay. Because like, I remember you doing some really cool tricks on those quads for your first time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it just felt, it trans, like rollerblading, roller, roller grinding translated over just like seamlessly for me, at least with like Royales and front sides. And you were on those, the Kaya, the black Kaya skates, right? The Karma Pros? No, I was on the red ones. The red ones, but it's just, I think it's the same model, just the, the older year. They have okay, like a kind yeah. of Royale, they have a Royale groove in them, right? In yeah. The plate. Yeah. How awkward was it to bend over on the roller skate like that with a little ankle support? Not at all. No? I mean, if anything, they felt close to REMS, like the old ones. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So I, I didn't have a problem at all. And I, the first Royale I ever did in roller skates was on moxie roller skates where you really have to like tweak um and it's harder uh, but the the kaya ones the these grind ones that they make whatever their names i don't i don't know what their names are or i can't remember but um they're designed really well for that like the grinding i was you know i have a pair of the kaya car pros that i've been skating like i skate them twice only um but in those two times, I was thinking to myself, like, do I want to, like, do rollerblade tricks on roller skates? I mean, they're really fun on rollerblades, right? Why should I do them on roller skates? I was kind of like, why don't I focus more on roller, roller skate-specific tricks yeah. instead? Yeah. Um, like the ones Montre. Montre does a lot. I mean, Montre does it all, but he does a lot of really cool roller skate-specific tricks. Dude, Montre's and, incredible, dude. Wow. He's an incredible roller skater. Amazing, isn't he? Like he's, in person, he's it's so amazing. crazy. Amazing. Amazing. We can talk about him a little later. We got Ricardo's in the house. Yeah. He said you could even switch Royale on roller skates. Well, you know, me and me and Ricardo were always like like uh going at it with each other with like switch and natural. <laughs> you, were you playing games of skate with Ricardo? Uh no, we were just like you got to if you do something, you got to do a switch natural and we were going through the, all of the tricks like we were playing that like a lot. But Ricardo is way better than me at skating actually. <laughs> like all skating or what? I don't know about all skating. <laughs> it's it's possible. It's possible. Um I don't think actually people know how good Ricardo is at skating or maybe they do. And I'm just like, whatever. 
but like he blew well, my I mean, mind. Ricardo did do that really sick negative acid in leading the blind. <laughs> And San Diego. I don't even remember that trick from that video, but no, I Ricardo do. Came, yeah, Ricardo came and slayed that crazy ledge that John Elliott ate shit on that day. <laughs> uh, so being in, it's okay for the, the Barbie. Had you met her before? Uh, no, that was my first time. And did yeah. you uh, learn anything from her for from roller skating wise? Um. Well, I wasn't roller skating because, like I said, I was sore. Right. But I attended the workshop and I saw, like, how she was with people. And it was really incredible uh, to just to watch her. And and then after the workshop, I actually got the chance to get a ride um, to drop her off at an airport. But we skated a skate park first. And it was like me, her, and Ricardo and another roller skater. I think another two roller skaters. And I just, like, at one point I saw her doing something tight and I just started filming her. And she just was skating and we were just, like, sessioning. And it was super cool. And she she was ripping. Like, I, I really I really dig her skating. And That's really the, cool, yeah. She's sick. She She's sick for sure. Now, if you were going to go to, like, you know, her... her um. What do you call it? Her, uh, the thing she did, the workshop. The workshop. If you go to her workshop as a skater, what do, would you expect out of it? Like, what would happen? Like, what's the process of what happens at the workshop? Um, well, I think from what I observed, there was like, there was different parts of it. I mean, sh she goes over different, like grind. She like sets aside time for like grinding, and then there's like jumping correctly and um how to be on transitions she just kind of what i saw was her go through like the uh you know just the various aspects of skating and she like brings a group together to all focus on that aspect and then goes to a next aspect and then another aspect and then brings them all together with just like a jam that's really cool yeah. Would you ever consider giving a workshop yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Could that be something in your future? Is that us? Have you thought about it at all? No, I haven't. But maybe, maybe, maybe I can put something together with Ricardo. Yeah. I mean, because that way, when you travel, you can travel. I know this is actually big in roller skating. I see roller skaters travel, roller skaters traveling the world doing workshops all over the place and getting paid for it, you know, like to supplement their travels. seems like it would, you know, you could do something like that as well. Yeah, um, no, totally. I've, I've thought about it for sure. Ricardo Lino said you did the switch Royale on the roller skates, but he says you can't switch front side down rails. Oh, what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> what do you dude, have to say about that? Dude. Okay. So at Ricardo's, at Ricardo's skate park, he has like every pair of skate, like every pair of skates. So I was trying on every pair of skate and just like skating. And I put on these uh, Rossi's Majestic 12s, um, which I have never skated. I put them on and I was feeling good. And I tried to switch front side the rail and my front foot completely missed and i went like with my chin bam like on the rail with like all of my momentum and busted my chin open and ricardo had to take me to the hospital and i had to get three stitches in my chest <laughs> that sucks dude i actually remember that happening now that you mentioned it i saw the photos of that oh yeah it, it really it sucked <laughs> so after skating all those different skates in ricardo's collection you still prefer the Aeons? Yeah, I do. Cool. Was there anything uh, that came in a close second? Was what? I said, was there anything you liked almost as much when you skated some different skates? Or um, no, I can't. I can't think of anything right now. I, I will say that at the skate park, I skated the the Rosie's Fifth Elements. The, the Ilya skates. And I had a good time on those. They were, 
they slid really well. And for my wide foot, they were really nice. And surprisingly, I liked what I saw when I looked down. Because at first, when I saw the colorway, it was not so much what I would choose. Mm -hmm. But then once I put them on, I, I thought they were actually pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like those skates work well with some people. You might have to color coordinate a little bit, you know, maybe take something from like Minnie Mitten's playbook. You know? <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I think they're pretty cool and they're unusual. Like, there's no color skate that's ever been like that. Actually, Laura Picard is skating those now in Montreal because um, he quit Icon and now he's skating those skates because Bobby hooked them up with uh -huh. Rosie's. Dude, now, Bobby fucking rips, dude. So you got to skate with both Ilya and Bobby. When it came yeah, I got to, to skate. With, I got to skate with uh, like everybody. It was super fucking cool. Not the whole time. Only like, only like a few sessions. But I got like a. I got a few days of skating with Nils and Bobby, and watching Nils and Bobby skate together at the same time is like ridiculous, dude. Like what they're doing is like nuts like street sessions or no 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 at the at the park did you do any street skating with those guys no i didn't get to um they did all their street skating and um or actually that's not true i went one day street skating with them um and we didn't really Oh, we skated like just some like ledges, just some basic ledges. It wasn't like a big street street day. They did most of their street skating in Lisbon. Okay. Yeah. Now, Ilya and Bobby, I saw some footage of them at the park. Like they're so good. I mean, it had to be really cool to watch Ilya skate. Did you ever have you ever met him in person before? No, but that was also really fucking cool. Um he was super cool and then skating with him. I've never seen someone just like having so much fun and like doing whatever the hell they want, <laughs> like on rollerblades in my life. That's amazing. Like, you... oh, go ahead. like, like, like he was just do, he was like going and doing whatever he want. Like in the middle of this like dirt field, there was this long plastic tube and he was he just like went to it and started waxing like the whole thing. And then just started skating and even if he wasn't rolling he just didn't even care he was just like grinding the whole thing and i went over and i sessioned with him actually that's really cool <laughs> For a little bit and then i found this uh i found this street sign that had a pole connected to it on the ground and i brought it to the parking lot and then i just propped it up against the curb and me Ilya, and yo Zank, all like sessioned like for like 45 minutes on this like just like broken pole next to a curb and it was so much fun <laughs> and yo zig's really good too dude yeah really really good so who was there i was yo uh nils Ilya, and bobby anybody else and bobby and harry okay do you know harry no Where's he from? He's from Germany. Okay. I his handle is Harry Ken. Okay. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And he rips too and he's super cool. And he <laughs> he, he he like came and he had like four different denial shirts. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were super That's old super school. Sick. Yeah, he was a really cool dude and he was really good um that's awesome so, so the whole like the whole rosie's crew was like really cool like i didn't get to spend like a whole lot of time with them i wish i could have spent more time um but you know they were like filming and and getting out in business and doing stuff now did you do any street skating at all uh, other than that ledge session while you were with ricardo lino mm -hmm. No, we mostly just skated at the park. And I mean, he's a pretty busy dude with work. Um, we went to a meetup in Lisbon that was really cool. Um, and it was like a rollerblading uh, quad mix like meetup. 
at a park inside of like a big park. But I don't think we did any street skating actually. Did you see spots by his house? Or yeah, he, he, yeah, of course. He showed me like the first rail he jumped on and he showed me like crazy rails he's done that were like really insane. Um, but no, we didn't really do any street skating. Is there any uh, like local scene in his town? In his town, there are, I know that there are some rollerbladers, but I know it's not big. Maybe he would know. I mean, he knows more than me, but I didn't see really that there was a so big of a local scene. And did you get into anything like besides skating, you know, at the park and stuff? Did you do anything else uh, when you were there? Did you go like to the beach, go around town? Oh, uh, yeah. Any he had a bike. other activities? Yeah, he had a bike. So I was actually a lot of times I was trying to bike every day to the beach because he lived close to the beach. And like Portugal's beautiful, dude. I'm sure it's amazing. And, and the beaches are incredible. And like every now and then, the like the whole family would jump in the car and we'd jump to the beach and go swimming and and hang out. Um, so there was there was quite some beach life happening. That sounds amazing. Summertime some, in Portugal, and, skating and beach. Yeah, it it would. I actually, to be honest. Um, when it came time to leave, I actually didn't want to leave, <laughs> um, which is That's a rare, which is like a rare thing for me because I'm always kind of just like ready to, ready to move. Right. I mean, you're a, you're like a vagabond traveler for years yeah. now. Uh, uh -huh. So looks like you found a, you know, maybe an option for a place to settle down in the future. Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, know about settling down. <laughs> did you get experience the food at all out there? Like different different cuisine at all? Yeah. Um, Portugal's uh, got really good food. It was it was sardine season. So oh, so fancy. I had sardines and those were really, really good. Um we had like a big barbecue of sardines at Merrick's house, actually, in Portugal. And that was really cool. And how far does Merrick live from Ricardo? maybe only like 20, 20 minutes or something. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Did you get to spend a lot of time with Merrick out there? Um, not a whole lot, but we spent quite a bit of time. I mean, because he works too, you know, he's doing all kinds of stuff at Heat and Skate and Blade yeah. Bill and like all that. Um, but he would come and hang out. Um, so that was cool. And he's, dude, and Merrick still rips, dude. Oh, I'm sure. Dude, I saw some clips of him uh, oh, somewhere. Somebody posted a clip of him recently skating, and yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah. we had talked about this before. He's you know the first person I filmed do a true kind grind on a handrail at the Lausanne contest in '99 when we were street skating. So uh -huh. you know he's like, you know, and we're talking about Merrick, owner of Heathen Skate, Bladeville legend from Poland. Um, <laughs> that's really awesome. It's really awesome that you got to spend time with him. Yeah. Ricardo. Now, with Ricardo, I know he's working on YouTube, the YouTube content all the time. Did you work on any projects with him for YouTube? Uh, I made some like guest appearances in in some, but not any projects in particular. Mostly, it was just like we would skate in his off time, or towards the end of my um, stay there when he was working quite a bit and he would kind of be done with things at like nine 30 because then he would have, he like works and then, you know, it's like home and it's dinner time and he has two children. So it's like full on life. And right. then once, and then once the children were asleep at like nine 30 to 10, then he'd send me a message cause he had internet at a skate park. Like you down to skate. And I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> And then he would come and then we would just like session for until like one in the morning. And that was like every day the last week I was there. It was so fun. We're just like sweating it out, trying to one up each other. And it was so cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Moore asks, true kind grind, whose was better? Hit, uh, Merrick's or Mike Radabaugh's? Well, I don't ever think I feel Mike Radabaugh do a true kind grind. 
Uh, I don't know. Merrick's, I know that Merrick's was super solid. I know that. And Merrick's was like, you know, in 99. I don't know when Mike Radabaugh did his first True Crime Grand. Do you? I don't, I don't know either, but it was probably a long ass time ago because Mike yeah. Radabaugh has been good forever. <laughs> yeah, he has been good. I can't answer that question, Nathan. I'd have to like actually. I don't remember. I, I'd have to see a clip of Mike Radabaugh doing a true kind run because I don't yeah, really we, remember. Yeah, we, we would have to see him side by side. Yeah, it's been it's been way too long for this old brain to, to think about <laughs> a specific skate trick from one skater from back in the day. I can barely remember stuff that I like filmed or did myself. <laughs> but to be honest, I wouldn't even want to make that comparison because Mike Radabaugh is like fucking Mike Radabaugh, you know? Mike Radabaugh. I should get Mike Radabaugh on the show. You should get Mike Radabaugh on the show. Let me make a note of that. Yes. That'd be Mike Radabaugh cool. out there. On get the show. For, get ready for this podcast. <laughs> so, you didn't want to leave Portugal, but you already had semi-commitment because you were planning on going to Blading Camp in Malaga, Spain. Is that correct? Yes. So, so actually, for the first time ever, uh, Josh drove... Um, from Malaga to Sinish, where Ricardo's from. And he came and visited with his wife and his daughter. And I haven't seen him in forever. So we all got to hang out and have dinner. And then he was like, dude, get to Blading Camp and you can come. And I was like, okay, so I just needed to get a bus ticket. And so I got a bus ticket and then, yeah. How long was the bus from Scenes to Malaga? I think maybe something like eight hours. It wasn't that bad. That'd be a pretty scenic drive. Yeah. Like, I would love to make that drive, actually. M maybe next summer. Yeah, it's I'd love, I, you know, I haven't had a chance to explore any of that area. And I'd really love to. Maybe I can make it out there with you with the rent a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can free yourself up. I can figure it out. I got planning I can do. Uh, so you took the bus to Malaga. And have you been in Malaga before for Blading Camp at all? or uh, Not for Blading Camp. I've been wanting for, to go for Blading Camp for like freaking years. But the last time I was in Malaga was filming with uh, Jonas Hansen's for, um, oh, shit. The state of the art? No. I think it's state of the art. Okay. Which was a really good video. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I was there and Josh actually lived there and we were staying with him filming for that. Josh has been there for quite a while now. I didn't even know he had a daughter. So that's cool. Yeah. He's got a beautiful daughter. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Living the dad life. So what was it like? You get to Portugal, I mean, to Spain, uh, they have like a, a compound for blading camp that you went to and you were staying there. So, so I arrived in Malaga and um, I arrived on the same day that everyone was going to meet, like all the people that like the coaches and the kind of people that were going to be running it. Um, and John Ortiz picked me up at the station. And then uh, we had an apartment rented all month for the... Um, dates that for the days that we didn't have to do camp and we were off. So we all just grabbed our things and then went back to the apartment and I met up and Montre showed up. And, uh, so it was like me, John Ortiz, Montre, Josh, and and then um, that was when I first got there. And then um, Mary Munoz ended up coming also. Um, oh, my homie Jim, that, sorry. But he lives there. Uh, he's, he's my homie from Manchester. Shout out, man. Big ups, Manchester! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think it's shout outs to my Manchester peeps. <laughs> Rob Which Dalton. Is, <laughs> Manchester is, you know, uh, an amazing scene. So many good skaters out of that city. Yeah, you know, I just, I just love, 
I just love the like the manner that like UK people have and the 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 way people talk and yeah. So yeah, that's that's how it started. And then I don't know what what would you like to know? Well well, so you're there at camp, like were you there to construct or like what was your your like reasoning um, for being there? So I was I was more um there's like coaches and the coach the main coaches are like Montre, John, um, Mary. They've been going there and Nils when he's there, they've been doing it for like years. And so basically I was I was actually more of like a muscle because it's a lot of work, dude. Like, it's like every day, like waking 40 people up and loading them on a bus, loading all the food and the drinks for the day and like, and then getting to a skate park and unloading everything and the people and setting it up. So it's a lot of work, a lot of, a lot, so a lot of my kind of like position was like, that part but i mean of course like i'm there and if i see someone doing something and i can help them i'm gonna you know i'm gonna instruct or you know give some advice on what i'm seeing so that's i really, i kind of did everything that's really cool yeah. and what was it like i know you've been um what well, i mean what would be close to like woodward back in the day uh lake owen or, I mean, but it, Woodward Lake Olin would be similar to Blading Camp. Like, you go there as a kid, you learn how to skate. Similar concept, right? Yeah. And how does it compare to Lake Olin, like, the structure of Blading Camp to what you experienced when you were younger oh, at, like, God. Lake Olin and stuff? Oh, man. Is it similar at all, or is it, uh, or would you say it's a completely different experience for the kids? I would say, in regards to, like, similarities, the 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 like the family vibe is like super strong and that's how i felt at lake owen because it was like a lot of the same kids coming back every single year um and that's how it is with blading camp like a lot of the people are have been going there for years and they're reconnecting every time so you know imagine like a whole year goes by and you then you get to see your friend again mm -hmm. and this so every week it's like that um and it's people from all over the world too so this is where it's like almost uncomparable because like doing something like what they do it's like the coolest thing in rollerblading hands down like That's it's amazing. the it's the coolest thing in rollerblading i've experienced hands down like ever i'd love and, to make that there sometime to check it out you should you should everyone should if they can <laughs> now like how many well how many weeks were, were you out there for i was like out there many, i was out there for two months two months and so there was what eight camp sessions or how many camp sessions in that, that two months uh i think there was six that i did okay there were six that i did but then i had to leave and there were like three, there were like, I think two more. And it's all the sessions or our kids, like kids, right? Or is it all ages? No, it's all ages. All ages. Okay. And there's some weeks that are like, like there's, I think there was like a, an all like basically mostly adults. Mm -hmm. And then there's like, sometimes there's quads only or there's inline only. Um, but it's, it can be mixed and everyone gets along. So it's really cool. Was there any campers that you knew? Uh, no. Was there any campers that impressed you? Like, do you remember anybody by name? Oh man. Shit, dude. <laughs> oh, oh man. I don't, I don't know. I'm brain farting right now. Oh, that's all right. Did you did you get on quads again at Blading Camp? You know, I I didn't. 
You got all those instructors to, to turn you into a super pro multidisciplinary skater. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't. And I honestly, I had some A on 80s and all I felt like doing was like cruising the whole time. I didn't even really grind that much. And what's Malaga like for cruising, for urban skating? Oh my God. It's it's super flat with a lot of like bike trails too. And oh, wow. just the beach. And I mean, every night I was going out, like if, if I didn't have to do something, I was out cruising the streets, getting lost, like purposefully getting lost, like just skating around all night. Is Malaga like Barcelona where you just see random skaters all over the place? There's a lot of rollerbladers. I saw a lot of rollerbladers, but in terms of grinding, not so much outside of the people that I knew. Uh, did it have like a like a like an organized weekly skate in Malaga, like a night skate? Did you do anything like that? Uh, no, but in, in Lisbon there is. And I got to go, I got to go to a couple Tuesday night skates at a skate park underneath a bridge mm -hmm. um, in Lisbon that Sick. my that my homie Miguel took me to. Um, other otherwise known as Mike, <laughs> I think more people know him as Mike, but. Uh, he's a roller skater and he used to rollerblade and he rips on roller skates. And he really like took care of me when I was in Lisbon and brought me and told me about the sessions. I didn't get to attend the like big city skate, but they have like a Tuesday night skate where everyone's welcome to come. And then like you can get help with your skating and it was really cool. That's rad. Yeah. It's really cool to see or hear about things happening like that all over the place. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. Going back to blading camp, like anyone watching this, you know, since it's an all ages type of camp, what would, what should people expect? Like what, if I was going to go or somebody on here wants to go to blading camp, what should you expect f for your week at blading camp to like, what are you going to do? Like what's happening? Oh man. So ev there's like, you get to so you get to skate like two new parks every day you're there and in between the sessions you get to go to like a lake or a beach or a hike so you get to really experience um that area of spain as well and that's really cool um but just the the friends that you'll make from all over the world I think is such like an incredible part of the camp. And then you have people like Montre and Barbie and like Mary and Nils and I think Bobby, if they go, if they can, like you have like pro level people teaching you, teaching you whatever you want to learn, like fully hands on, like, I've never seen people like help people jump onto rails, but I saw it work and I saw it happen and it was really incredible. Um, so I, I, I think you don't, you won't have access to this kind of learning like anywhere. That's um, really amazing. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have access to, basically like professionals like all the time mm -hmm. and you're in a beautiful place yeah and in a beautiful place and the the like housing that it is it's like in the mountains is beautiful it oh man and the food <laughs> what do they do for food at camp uh it's i mean it's all kinds of food um like local style food or just camp food it's like like camp food, but a mix of camp food and local style food. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds great. I think uh, well, I'm gonna post a link up to Blading Camp in the description below, so everyone can go click on that, check it out, find out more, maybe plan a trip to Spain 
next summer. Yeah. Attend. Are you going to go back next year? Yes. So Robert can wake you up in the morning, stick you in the van, or maybe he'll be teaching. Who knows? But Rob will be there, and you can get some advice on skating. And he can tell you about how not to stuff your shoe or your feet into a too small size skate. <laughs> <laughs> right? So um, we we got Ben Benjamin Sanders in the house. Says Rob G is my spirit animal. You've been on Ben's show before talking. Cool ass guy from nice, Texas. Yeah. Now he moves, lives in Oklahoma. Can you believe that? Somebody moved to Oklahoma from Texas. Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, but Oklahoma I... does have uh, some really cool new skate parks. And yeah, it's pretty interesting. Check out his channel. It's I Roller Boot on YouTube, and you can follow his skating adventures. He is a really good rollerblader. He is. A, he videos, is right. He is a really good rollerblader. He's really good at yeah. skating. It's pretty amazing, and. He does some really good skate reviews. If you're interested in any aggressive skates, he pretty much reviews all of them. So definitely check out his channel. Um, we've got Michael Martino is in the house. He almost <laughs> missed this. You did almost miss it. You missed like uh, like the first uh, hour or 56 minutes. And Michael, yeah, but was, that's all right. It's like you can go back and watch it. You know, it's like, not like we've you, only it's, we've only talked. To, we we haven't even. <laughs> Yeah, we you know we're still scratching the surface here, Michael. Yeah, so we're still we got plenty. In, we're still we got plenty in, here, but we're still <laughs> at Blading Camp. Yeah, we're still Blading Camp, and Michael should go to Blading Camp. Michael was a guest on this show last episode. Yeah, episode I, twenty-eight was with Michael Martino. If you haven't checked it out, people watching this, it's in this YouTube channel. <laughs> so just find it. It's right before this one, and <laughs> it's actually really, really, really awesome. Michael has a lot of cool things to say. We catch up. It was a great conversation. I had a lot of fun talking with Michael. And it's cool to see him here in the chat. And uh, <laughs> Michael's got a super chat question. Great to see both of you in here at the same time. Hope to skate with you both soon. Are you both going to Blading Cup? Uh, I'm not going to Blading Cup. Are you going um, to Blading Cup? No, unless something last minute, someone decides to fly me out there. <laughs> So where you you're saying well we'll just go fast fast forward a little bit. You said you're only going to be in Quebec a little bit longer. Where do you plan on going after you leave Quebec? Um, I I think I think California. Okay, like Northern California. Yeah, I think so. Well, if I you don't... go to Northern California, you can get a ride to Blading Cup. Well, yeah, but I would have to buy a ticket like right now. And mm. fly. Oh, yeah, you have to get there. You you don't know when you're flying, so that's the problem. Yeah. What about Bitter Cold Showdown? Have you, have you thought about going to that? Um, no. Other than I just saw that they started following me on Instagram, and then I watched a bunch of like the really old school videos, which I happen to be in one talking about how good Billy O'Neill is. <laughs> that's awesome, and Billy O'Neill is very good. And it's uh, 2020, and I'll still talk about how good Billy O'Neill is. <laughs> now, for people living in a, in a in the dark ages, bitter cold is coming back in February, like February, like the first week of February, with a 20th anniversary competition. It's going to be like their last one. They haven't done them in years, but they're doing one for 20th anniversary. It's going to be in Michigan. It's going to be at Modern Skate Park, and I think I'm going to try to get there for that. Really? Um, yeah. So it's in. It's like the one contest that's in my. Uh -huh. It's like far enough out where I can save up money to get out there. Uh, Blading Cup and stuff's a little bit too soon. Um, but Michael, thanks for the super chat, and and I'm sure Michael's going to be Blading Cup because he lives like down the street. Mike's fucking <laughs> ripping, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's always ripped. The first time I met him, I was really blown away with how good he was, and then he just continued to be really good and still does continue to be really good whenever he puts on skates. I mean, I just saw a clip of him do like a unity to soul ledge transfer gap over a ledge thing today. Um, Dude, I can't believe how much sick footage they, those guys, his crew is pumping out, you know, between him and Richard and Dominic, like all of them are just dumping, yeah. are just doing so much cool shit. Like, yeah, I love seeing all of it. I love when I, when I remember when I was first seeing these Dom, clips appearing i was just like 
Wow, man. <laughs> because he's, it's, you know, he's still he's still the full on gecko. Like, <laughs> here we go. Dustin Fisher, someone buy this man an effing ticket. <laughs> if anybody wants to buy Robert a ticket to Blading Cup, <laughs> he will. He will. He will gladly take you up on it. Oh, glad you take you up. On <laughs> and uh, and Vinny wants to know Blade Cup is a SoCal, right? It is in Santa Ana, California, which is in Southern California. So, um, and it's them. It's it's organized by John Julio. So yeah, it's you know it's by it's right by the them shop. Uh, yeah, I mean it's a great event, very cool event that he does out there. Now we got a little bit sidetracked from Spain. Now, is there anything else about blading blading camp Malaga that you want to get into that we didn't cover? Um, any just stories? How, any crazy how, stories? How incredible of a human being Montre Livingston is, like on all levels because like at blading camp they have rollerblading and they have roller skating and like to watch like watching montre skate like everyone knows montre for you know doing skating incredible because he skates incredible but like if you actually get to see who he is like at camp it's like you, I, I feel like you really get to see who he is because not only is he ripping, but he's like teaching everyone all the time, like nonstop and like loving it, like loving every moment of it. And I was watching people learn from him like so quickly. And I was just, you know, really impressed. I'm just really impressed with who he is. Well, I've always been impressed with him on, on how he interacts with kids, you know, competitions, like, you know, he's like every kid's best friend. Like you see, you know, winter clash or whatever, like, yeah, talk to every kid. He's super nice to him. You know, I remember dealing with a lot of pros back in the day. They wouldn't give kids two cents. You know, they were just, you know, such assholes to him. And he's always been very professional. Yeah. Um, when it comes to that stuff. And like you're saying at camp, like, I really think that would be really cool to see. Yeah, now, what, it, it is. And I've cut you off. I don't know if you had some more to say about him, but I I don't know, but it's just like because it's roller skating and rollerblading, but some weeks were only roller skaters. So then I got to just see Montre be Montre with roller skates. <clears throat> and he's just like like in like to see him like kill it on roller skates is nuts, dude, because he's so good. And has so much style and he's able to actually explain and teach what he's doing to kids and make it fun for kids. Um, but I like that across the board, he just does that. Like it doesn't even matter what he's freaking got on his feet or if he has anything on his feet at all. Um, so he's like, he's a real, uh, He's a real gem at uh, Blading Camp, and um, I just really, I just really respect and honor who Montre is as. Wow, that's a awesome! Human. Yeah, Montre is. Uh, I've you know I've known Montre for a long time. He skated for you know Rat Tail and stuff, and mm -hmm. Montre is actually one of the first people I interviewed for this podcast series, and we do talk about Blading Camp quite a bit in that interview. Um, how it started, you know, would they? Kind of did their tours around Europe and stuff first. So if you want to know more about Montre and his blading camp, you know, his life at blading camp, check out his podcast episode on this channel. I'll try to link that in the description below as well. Mm -hmm. Um we got a Dustin Fisher goes back to I love watching them at first Sundays. So I'm assuming he's talking about Micah Martino, who said thanks guys, really is an honor. Uh <laughs> have you been to First Sundays at all? Their skating thing they do in LA? I I haven't been I haven't been in the states since like May. Mm -hmm. or yeah, I, just, in, or I think they've been doing it for a while. I mean, it's Southern California. You don't really you're not really down there very often, are you? Yeah, no, I, I haven't been in a while. I've got this 
we've got these porn things popping into the into the uh, live feed, <laughs> and it won't let me. It won't let me delete them. Um, I ain't even seeing them. <laughs> All right, so I ain't even letting them enter. <laughs> I put the user in timeout. It wouldn't let me block them, so I put him in timeout. Uh, Michael Martino says no, but you will soon skate <laughs> one of the Sunday sessions. And and you know, I talked to this about Michael and some other people, but LA and Orange County, like the scene out there right now, it's just it's the spot to be in the United States. There's so many skaters, there's so many sessions, there's so many shops, not just an aggressive, you know, and like big wheel blading urban skating. There's a night nice skate almost every night a week in the LA area. Like it's really, really? Like the hub of skating right now, and I'm definitely jealous every time I see stuff happening in you know LA because uh, it's you know I miss that whole family and 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 you know group skates and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's really cool that those guys all get a kind of you know have such a great scene to be part of. Yeah, I I love that the like people from around this that started skating kind of when i started skating and around the period that we started skating are making it to sessions together and really bringing the kind of energy of those sessions back you know it's it's something actually right now that i'm i've kind of only been focused on is just like what like i've been seriously like studying what the elements are that made up uh those 90 sessions you know like mm -hmm. what what made them so good like what are the elements and then just essentially replicating them because you know it's not about like living in the 90s but just like looking at what are the elements that made them so dope and then making sure that they're present in the session <laughs> yeah that's that's great uh that's a great thing to try to do i mean i feel like that way with doing new things you know like big wheel blading and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, is my i want to ask everybody live chat is my audio sound a little bit clipping out or does audio sound okay robert does it sound good to you my audio yeah no it sounds perfect Okay, I hear some a little bit of feedback on it, so I was just want to make sure it's okay. Um, but like you know, doing like you know big wheel blading and stuff, and like, and then much, and then I started doing some wizard skating. Like all every time I do something new within skating, I always get that same feeling I had when I first started aggressive skating. It's mm -hmm. just like really fun. It's new. Um, the only thing is, I don't get to do it with anybody, you know, because there's nobody around here. Uh -huh. uh, which kind of sucks. Um, uh, Launder's got a question for you. Thanks, Launder. Uh, tips for skating fakey. Why the hands up on grinds? Why the tips for skating fakey? Well, I guess you can start with tips for skating fakey. Um, I think it's like keeping the area from from like here down like from your chest down making sure that's solid fakey and having it more about twisting your shoulders i i don't know I, i'm like actually trying to show you with like my phone or something <laughs> i don't know what i what i focus on is like having my body like straight and then just turning my uh only trying to turn only my shoulders baby um look at that you're already doing a uh you're you're <laughs> practicing for your workshop right now <laughs> in real life um, um so some people did hear some feedback from me how's it sound now i don't hear the feedback anymore nathan Vinny, is the feedback gone let me know in the comments section uh so okay and then why the hands up on grinds i'm assuming he means maybe like when you did the little prayer thing or something oh, god. <laughs> oh my god uh no i think he's talking about like when i lock certain grinds 
my hands kind of go up or I, I know what he's talking about. Um, you know, my hands, I feel like are kind of like my, like my sails, if that makes sense, like sails on a boat. Like that's how I feel them to actually be. Um, and I, and I, there was a time when I was experimenting with like, if I focused when I was grinding, if I focused only on my hands and what they were doing and then trusted the rest of my body to do the grind that, um, and keeping my hands steady and, uh, basically directing everything that my skating felt better. Like I would, I would pretend I would just be doing everything with my hands and not thinking about the rest of my body. And I think it just like stuck. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, like, I don't know why Eric Shrine does the things with his hands when he does top acids or John Starr when he does Swiss set, but it just feels comfortable for me. Like it, it's like a way of balancing. I don't really even remember you doing it. I'm sure if I pay attention now to the footage of us that we filmed when we were in Quebec, maybe I'll notice it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, going back to Europe. Okay. We've. Do you have any, is there any crazy stories during playing camp? Anything? Uh, oh, you know? fuck. <laughs> Dude, oh, well, it's like, I think this is one I try to, like, block out of my head. Okay, let's hear it. That sounds it was like a great like, one. It was, like, first day of uh, that camp was about to happen. And we, like, me, John Ortiz, Montre, we're all, um, I think, about to go to the beach to meet up with everyone. Um, and we're walking down the street. And then all of a sudden there was this like car kind of like, Aah! and then there was this sound of a body being hit by a car. And Ooh. then we all, we all turned our heads really quick to the street and watched a woman fly through the air and land on her face and her stomach and hit a curb. And then we had to like, you know, we went over there, you know, to make sure she was all right. And it was super fucking intense, man. That was that was maybe the only craziest story that I had. That's a, that's a, like a lot more morbid, crazy story than I was expecting. I was expecting <laughs> like, you know, John Ortiz, you know, getting drunk and like, you know, falling off of. No, he, he he wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. <laughs> He's too smooth. He's too smooth for that kind of shit. <laughs> that's crazy. That's a crazy story. That's crazy to see. Yeah, it was really intense, man. It was super intense because like none of us could do anything but mm -hmm. like stand there and basically like try to talk to her and make sure she's okay. Like just that situation where you just you you're just looking at someone who just got hit by a car and you can't do like there's nothing you can do. Um, so yeah, it was intense. And then we went right into the first week of camp. <laughs> like, that is crazy. That is yeah. uh, definitely a little shadow getting into the camp with that. Yeah. Um, Johnny K says, hola amigos. Welcome <laughs> to the live chat. We've got Richard Johnson in the house. Yeah, Richard, he I says, I need man. alerts for these man. So <laughs> if you're watching this interview right now with Robert Guerrero, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos and have live streams. That's one way. Another way is I'm starting to do these interviews on Mondays. I think the first three Mondays a month will be in your podcast. So it's going to be basically 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. First, second, third Mondays of the month. The, the fourth week will be a daytime podcast with somebody from a different country so we can do you know it's so i can't do it at night so but you can expect pretty much the same time three days three mondays a month uh 
And then we've got Acosta Blades, Josh Acosta in the house. Also yeah. an awesome skater. <laughs> Colorado Springs, who has a really good YouTube channel too. Acosta Blades, check it out. His whole family skates. It's pretty awesome nice. having a blading family. Oh, and we have another legendary skater in the house. Ryan Northway. Whoa, whoa. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, we got some heavy hitters in the live chat whoa, today. Northway. Ryan fucking Northway. Now, his question is, what's the number one thing going through your mind when out skating lately? Such as uh -oh. doing hard grinds, making sure you're enjoying yourself, there to inspire others, mood and push sessions forward. Um, The main thing on my mind lately is just like, how much I can relax when I'm doing things and avoid impact at all, like cost. <laughs> like I was even at the session I was at yesterday, I was even experimenting with like, how can I make, how can I do step-ons, but do them in a way where they're not really like step-ons and just completely avoid any impact. <laughs> um, so a lot of it is just like how how can I how can I skate and have fun and have it not hurt at all and not have any impact not have any impact as much as possible. So I'm exploring in the, all the ways I'm skating, um, just like how I'm moving and how I can move better. It's actually all I care about, to be honest. I'm. I'm just like observing my body when I'm doing things and seeing if I can do it better and like just constantly observing my body because when you really like look at how you do things, a lot of times we're doing things in ways that like hurt us. Like we're not thinking of the consequences you know of what of what we're doing we're just thinking of like the, the pleasure like the quick pleasure we're getting from doing what we're doing but um sometimes we're doing something and and we're getting like a buzz from it almost like a drug we're getting like a buzz from it but just like a drug sometimes there's like these side effects right so yeah. i'm i'm trying to not have any side effects <laughs> Uh, from my skating other than just joy i mean would you say this this year you just had been having a lot of time just skating right yeah i mean it hasn't been stressful really or no or not at all it? and i and i just told myself that i wasn't i wasn't gonna film anything like i don't want to think about filming i don't want to and even now i'm like I'm, I tried, I tried to like film some clips, I think last week and it just doesn't, it's not working. Maybe one day it'll work and there'll be a balance and I can like go filming and stuff. But like the whole getting clips thing for me right now, it's not a, it's not what I'm about in this moment. So we shouldn't expect to see a Robert Guerrero section anytime in the next month or two. I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but the odds of that yeah, the odds of that being true are higher than untrue. <laughs> Looks like we have your good friend Mathieu Ledeau is in the oh, house. Oh yeah. Which you guys are in the same town right now, right? Is he up there in Drummondville or is he is traveling again? No, um well, he could be right now, but normally he lives outside of Drummondville, like out, outside of the town, but he grew up skating here. And um, real quick, I just want to shout out Drummondville Blading because lately at the skate park, we've been having sessions with like so many of the guys that used to blade back in the 90s here in Drummondville. And Drummondville is, it's it's like a smaller town or smaller village two hours north of Montreal. 
Um, so it's not a huge town, uh, but a lot of the bladers from the nineties are coming out to session and we're, we're like skating together. It's really cool. That's really rad. That's yeah. really cool. Uh, that they're out there. Um, has, um, what's his name? The, the, the skater from there that you used to skate with and make the, the videos with you and Mathieu Lado. Ke um, Kevin, La Kevin Lapierre. Yeah. Has he been skating with you? at all uh we skated we skated the um we skated on saturday for a little bit but he's he like owns a company and he's mm -hmm. got a wife and a daughter and like so he's pretty busy so it's kind of hard to get a hold of him cool well but, i saw that he was doing his business um which is it seems like he's like trying to focus on his life on doing that right now a yeah more that's good. That's cool. Yeah. Um, now back to the live chat. What we got going on here? Michael Martino just became a YouTube member to this channel. Thank you for your support, Michael. If anybody out there wants to support this channel, you can become a member of this YouTube channel. I also have a Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, I have links in the description below to that stuff. Um, let me see. What else do we got in here? We have. Oh, first of all, did you see? Andrew Brooms winning clip at the Frank Morales Invitational. No, I, I, the only thing I've seen was some clips on a ghetto community edit. Well, well, Andrew Broom won that contest. I as soon as they said he was going, I was like, just give him the prize. Like he's definitely going to take it, and he did. So I should wow. put a wager. I should put a wager on that. Yeah. You uh, should have. All right. Um, do, 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 is, do. is is Andrew Broom originally from Austin? No, he's from Tyler, Texas. So oh, okay. um, it's out in East Texas. It's the same town where uh, Cody Sanders is from. Oh, okay. Um, and and uh, and T uh, Timona TK uh, and Fugi, who makes all the, the videos for the come down videos. It's like a town in East Texas. It's very small. And it's had a lot of skaters, you know, a big scene out there. Um, brought us some really good skaters. I'm not sure how, but it's pretty incredible. Uh, Mathieu Lado is in town. Oh, no, he's not in town. Mathieu is not in town. So yeah. traveling. Oh, we got Kevin LeBron's in the house as well. <coughs> and then Dan, Drummondville is my hometown. Let's go. Yeah, Dan Miller. <laughs> Sick. And shout out Ghetto Community. And as iRoboot says, hit the like button, people. Hit the like button if you're enjoying this interview with Robert. Make sure and leave any comments. You might have questions in the comments area. If you have any questions for Robert in this live chat, go ahead and post those in the live chat. So, yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, now, the next place you went after Spain was Poland. Yeah. And why? Why were you going to go to Poland? Where did you go in Poland? Well, I, so I have a friend in Poland and I went, I wanted to visit her and then also be in the mountains there. So my first, like my first maybe five days, I was up in the, up in the mountains and the mountains called Oh man, now I'm forgetting how to pronounce it correctly. Zopanie. Zopanie. Zop I think it's Zopanie. No. Zop. Zap. Zapokanie. I, think. I have Zapokanie. no idea what it is. <laughs> Zapokanie. I know you don't. You would know. Um, so I, but actually, um, wait. So I did that for like four days. And then, um, and then I wanted to go skate. So I spoke with Merrick because he was there actually, he happened to be there. And I, and I wanted to link up with him. So he, um, I, I got a bus ticket. Wait, no, no, no. I got a plane ticket. And when I got there, I got picked up and taken 
straight to uh, freaking like their version of Nitro Circus. Oh, really? Yeah, with uh, with uh, Tomek and okay. and Piotrek. Like they're in that. In their... Yeah, they were in the show. Oh, with, sick. like well, those a, guys a are. Of... Huh? And Piotrek is a legend. Dude, Piotrek is. Sick, I mean, dude. he's like your age, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's still shredding it. I mean, he skated for you know Rat Tail Brands as well. He was one vicious and uh -huh. you know was a really good skater. And, yeah, and was that was that in Katowice or what city was that in? Yes, that was in Katowice. And uh, so we went to the show, and we, and I met I met like a few other really rad Polish skaters, but I am I'm sorry, I'm forgetting exactly their names. One of them was Kuba. Um. Oh, but then there was. Uh, I'm feeling like such an asshole right now. I'm forgetting names, but then okay, I'm gonna let you. I mean, Polish names are hard to pronounce. So, <laughs> but anyway, so so check this, dude. I went to like I fly there. I go straight to this. I go straight to the show. And then Piotrek was in the show. And after the show, then Piotrek dro drove after the show, after being in this crazy show, drove me and him back to uh, back to Warsaw. And uh, I stayed with. Uh, oh, no, no, no. His wife was hosting an adult only inline camp where most the uh, most of the skaters there were over 40. And I got to join in on the very last day of the camp that they had. What um, kind of camp was it for like, uh, like just regular skating or progressive skating? Um, it was like, a, it was aggressive, slalom. I mean, it was kind of like everything. Okay. Yeah. And Poland, I know, has a lot of camps and workshops happening in that country. It's the skating yeah. scene is all the disciplines of skating are just so big there. I I mean, I think their scene is like the biggest mm -hmm. from what I've from what I've experienced and seen. It's like the biggest and like one of the strongest actually. Did you get to go on a Warsaw Friday night skate? No, I didn't. Because that thing's supposed to have like thousands of skaters on it. Yeah, I didn't get to do that. I I didn't I didn't have much. I I wish I could have stayed there longer, and hopefully next summer I can go and be a part of some of what they're doing because their scene is really amazing. So you only were in Katowice for like a day, is that right? I or? was yeah, I was in like Katowice for a day, and then I was in uh, Warsaw for like a day. Okay, so Katowice is an amazing town i love it and that's where america is from that's where hedon skate was founded mm -hmm. um it's got a rich history in blading for you know european blading scene um so at least you guys spend a day there oh, and then warsaw is just awesome oh whoa <laughs> sorry so okay. and then in poland and you went back to the mountains after that oh shit. what are you doing robert I'm trying to, yeah, whatever. Um, well, no, then, then I, then I flew back to Montreal. So you're only pulling for what a few, like a week or so? Or? Like, yeah, I was, I was only there for like a week. It was like kind of like a, a vacation trip for me because at blading camp, you're it's like full on, like. It's it's full on. It's beautiful and amazing, but it's like full on. Once you get into it, you're like it's go go go, all day long, every day. Blading. <laughs> and when you booked your flight to Europe, did you book your return flight from Poland, or did you just decide to go back to uh, Montreal or back to Quebec? No, I decided. To <clears throat> I decided to come back to Quebec um, at the end. I the only trip that I booked was the trip to Portugal. Okay. 
everything else where I left to unfold by itself once I got there. And why did you pick Quebec as your place to go back to? Because this land is, I, I really, I really like the people here and the, this part of the earth, I just, I really like, I feel like a nice connection to, so I like being here. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I love it. I'm there all the time. I've actually, me and Megan were talking about, we really need to just get an apartment in Montreal for the weekend. Well, I mean, I don't spend any time in Montreal. Well, I'm just saying, we, oh, okay. want, well, we just like it there. So we want to get, okay. it's Quebec, right? I mean, it's all the same as far as the people are really cool. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, the skate scene, and the skate scene in Montreal is really amazing. So, uh, and, you know, just going there, it's like Europe, the food's good. Uh, it's it's just nice. It's really nice. I like it there a lot. Um, now, you went back to Drummondville, and you're staying with your friend Pete, right? Yeah, yeah, Pete Burns. <laughs> and did you hit him up uh, before you went there, or how did, that, how did you end up at his house? Uh, Matthew actually uh, connected us. And so, yeah, I've been here for like a month. And... Uh, oh. Pete, Pete is an OG skater from the 90s also. So, you know, whenever you're like an, an old school skater from the 90s, there's always this like, you know, available bond that's like instantly kind of there. Um, so, yeah. And Pete's somebody we saw, well, when I came up to visit you one day, he came out to the skate park. And he was actually a person who helped put that park together, helped like with the construction of it or, you know, the planning of that park. Yeah. The one in Drummondville that you skate. Um, yeah. Have you, been, have you been skating with him quite a bit now? Yes. Just, yes. I mean, whenever, whenever he can skate, we skate. Um, because he is a, he's like a full-time nurse and super busy. And he has to, he also has two children. So, you know, he's got a pretty busy dad life, yeah. but, he is always down to skate. So when any time he has like a free moment, like tonight we were supposed to go uh, big wheel skating around, time, around town before this, but he got busy with some, some stuff. So we couldn't, but he's always down. Does he live in town or does he live out, outside of town? Because like your last place he stayed was pretty far outside of town. He lives. He lives probably like a ten minute skate from from the park. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, like I walk there sometimes, yeah. so it's not it's not far. Yeah, it's a lot nicer for you because you can easily leave the house and just skate around compared yeah. to the last spot, which was like pretty far out. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that was Pat's house. <laughs> and you haven't made it to Quebec City yet. No, I haven't. You gotta. You gotta. But I would, I would love to connect with Charles because Charles is amazing. I know he's been out, you know, filming a lot with Emini for their vault video. Uh, maybe you can get a session with him before you leave. Uh, it's it's almost winter up here too, so you're picking a decent time to head to California. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Would you consider staying in Quebec in the winter? Have you ever been here in the winter? I've 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 been here in the winter. I wouldn't say that I've been here like really been here where I've been here for like months or something and really got to experience that. Um I like thought about certain aspects that I might enjoy in the winter. But I think maybe this winter, I'm still really focused like on my skating and like my, like my skating, the way I'm skating. So I would like to just keep on skating. Mm -hmm. And it's about to get to the point where you can't do that here. You have to, you have to be in Montreal where they actually have indoor skate parks. Yeah, exactly. So, 
and it's already getting like colder and here it's been like raining quite a bit oh really yeah but it's nice right now i mean this weekend was beautiful in montreal oh it was incredible here we skated both days now let's pop back into the live chat see what we've been missing you've got a shout out rob shout out from 805 from adam kelly <laughs> yeah he now we got another NorCal skater, Vinny. He asks for Rob, do you have any communication with Kwang Do or Donnie Garcia in recent times? Uh no. When I was when I was living in Mopitas and I was going to some events they were having there, I would see Kwong every now and then there. But no, I'm I'm not in touch with him. And I haven't talked to either one in uh-huh. A long, long time. Mm -hmm. Now, Ryan Northway says, can you get Lonnie out of his house to blade with us? I don't know. I haven't spoken to Lonnie in a really long time. So I am I talked to Lonnie a little bit here and there recently, and he talked about missing skating. So hopefully he can get out. I'm going to try to get him on this, sh on this show, uh, on the podcast. So... Hopefully we can get him on here, talk to him about going skating with Ryan Northway and getting out in LA scene a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, okay. Then, Rob, is there anywhere that you haven't skated and you would love to visit and skate? Australia. And where in Australia? Anywhere? Yeah, anywhere. <laughs> I want to skate with like all like Dom and like just all those dudes, Tien and like oh man, Gab Drum and yeah. I'm sure they would all put you up for the place to stay. So you just have to get out there, yeah, make a plan someday. Actually, and Japan, Japan, yeah. Mm. That's, I've never uh, been to Japan, but I love Japanese skating. Yeah, Japan definitely would be an awesome place for you to visit. The skaters out there are so nice, and mm -hmm. um, they got a lot of a lot of OGs out there still skating, and industry yeah. people, and they will take good care of you if you go out there. Yeah, I, I would like to. I just, I just want to go there and and like have maybe their like their style rub off on me a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like maybe if I'm around them long enough, I can pick up on some like some on, on some Japanese secrets. I'll tell you one thing was crazy when we went there was like, cause I went there with uh, John Elliott, Robert Levanos for razors and they have so, most of the rails are aluminum. So really? Yeah, so it was like a different type of skating because it's not really like your metal rails like right here. They're all like aluminum, and they all hated the ground control frames because they wouldn't slide on these aluminum rails. <laughs> um, I couldn't even tell, man. They rip so hard. They do, this right? Latest, this latest uh, Yuto edit? Wow. Incredible, dude. I'll have to. I, I think I saw it. I'll have to double check. It's for the. It's for his pro skate. Okay, I might have missed it. I'm gonna have to watch it. Well, it's it's there. We've got a uh, Richard Spear. I picked my apartment specifically because it's half a mile from the park. Nice warm up spot. No, what nice warm up skate before I get there? Half a mile from the skate park sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. And then Alex Ashfield, Rob, thanks for the great time. Feet was definitely a great blading moment. Legends, great soul. Uh, yeah, like the, the feet times were like a very special time uh, in blading. I mean, especially because they were always so organic. Like I was like filming because I just happened to be like passing through and then like couch surfing wherever you know Lonnie was and then we would just the sessions would just like pop off and that's what blading with chef knives we miss Lonnie and Rob G sections and you guys did come up with some really good ones over those years uh-huh 
And Richard misses you. Oh man, I miss Richard too. He said he loves Australia. He was there in 2005. Oh, Ken's his brother. Good. Japan is awesome. He's obviously been to all these places that you want to go to. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got Sandro Tiago. Roberto, how are you? <laughs> and <Ooh>. Sandro, <laughs> Sandro Timoteo. Oh, Roberto, how are you? Now, oh. Sandro lives in Montreal. You got to go to Montreal and skate with Sandro one time. He's not he's not there right now, is he? Yeah, he's there. He's living there. I thought he's not living there anymore. No, he wasn't living there a little bit because of COVID, but he's back. He was there during Montreal Cup. Like he's there now. Oh shit. I didn't even know that. I thought he was gone. No, he's there. He can verify it in this conversation, but I'm ninety nine percent sure that he's living in, in Montreal now. Oh shit, man. I didn't know that. I just assumed he left and then was like a left. He he left and came back. Oh, okay. It was COVID. That's the only reason he was gone because COVID. Yeah, he says, I'm here, bro. Let's skate. Oh, what? So get to Montreal. How about I how about this? Sandro, let us know what days you can skate. I drive, pick up Robert, go to Montreal, skate with Sandro, drive back, drop Robert off, go home. Yes. Day trip. How's that sound? Yes. Yawn. Do it. Um, Sandro Timoteo, I moved to Montreal this year. So there you have it. He's there. Okay. Emily, Emily says one day, one trick a day plus Rob G plus Japan. Look at that. And Jan looking fresh today. Well, thanks, Richard. Coming from the fresh man himself. Uh, I appreciate it. Actually, no one, no one commented on my shirt today. This is a ground control shirt. That never came out. It's the only one. It's a shirt I made for their final line that wasn't released, or the Rato line we did. And I had this printed on oh, my hair is print on a man website. So <laughs> that's the um and then Pierre says he can put us up. I'm assuming in Montreal. So we have a place to stay. Yawn, let's get let's let's make like a real trip. All right, like, so let's uh and like film it and like do all this stuff. All right, well, Pierre, why don't you hit me up on Instagram and we can arrange something? Uh, I, I feel like I'm having bad feedback again on my microphone. Is it bad in the live chat? Let me know. Um, Mike Martino says, I love that hat and shirt, and then. Sandra says, Carlos Laura says, hi from Peru. Everyone loves you, bro. Such a good man. Oh, man. Oh, uh, what? Carlos says, hi, what? Dude, I haven't seen. Carlos used to always be, like, the first dude I would hit up when I would arrive in Lima and, like, show me around and, and like, take me to skate spots and stuff. I haven't spoken to him, I think, since I left Peru the last time like three years ago. Oh, and then Pierre is actually my friend Anthony. So that's who I stayed with during blading, uh, blading the Montreal Cup. So we got a place to stay. We could stay with him. Uh, I guess we just figure out a day to go up. Um, so we'll plan this, you know, after the show sometime. But awesome. That sounds good to me. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Mike Martino, Rob, what skates are you skating at this moment? Someone might have already asked. We did cover that, but why don't you let Michael know what you're on? Uh, right now, I have some Sam Croft Pro Aeons and the 80 millimeter Aeons. Cool. And you like the Aeons a lot. Yeah. And let me see. Uh, uh, Alex Ashfield asks, got any favorite move, spot, rider, blade setup? Any, you have favorites? Any favorites of anything, Robert? Like, what's your favorite trick? Royale? Back Royale. <laughs> Back Royale. Close. Back um, Royale. Uh, favorite spot, Sea Ledge. <laughs> Sea ledge in Austin or a different sea ledge? No, just like any sea ledge. 
You remember Sea Ledge Lost? Yeah, of course downtown? I do. Of course I do. Yeah. It's still it's, there, isn't it? It's yeah, but it's super chunky. Yeah. Spot. And, yeah, Spot, Sea Ledge, Ryder. Uh Oigan and then Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh-huh. I mean Dom Bruce also. Oh man, Dom. I got to spend two weeks at Blading Camp with Dom. Oh really? That's and awesome. We had so much fun. I never I never got to hang out with him, but he's such a rad dude. Hey, he's and like He's just like a lot of fun just to be around. And so he was like perfect at camp because he was just having fun with all the kids. One of these kids told Dom, he said, I don't understand what you're doing, but I like it. That's hilarious. <laughs> On like skates. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, I don't understand what you're doing, but it, but I like it. <laughs> Jared McBay and I got to skate with Dom in Edinburgh and Scotland like, I don't know. It's been like five, six years now. Uh, I got Dom on, big, on a set of Big World Blades for the first time, and he got some cool clips of them mm -hmm. on those. Uh, Mike wanted to know, have you tried Sways? No, I haven't. But well, I, ha I have some I can bring up. Uh, you can try them out. Yeah, I, th that's one I haven't tried with you, I think. Yeah, I have the All-Stars. We can bring them. I'll bring them up. Uh, on the trip, whatever, we could try them out. You can let Michael know what you think about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, two best setups ever. Oh, sh ever. Uh, US, USD Thrones with tumor plates and 50-50 juice frames. That's a throwback right there. Um. Oh man, I don't know. That's the first one that comes to mind. Well, I think that's that's like as good as two right there. <laughs> yeah. And you know uh, what? You know what skate I actually really liked was the uh, the Razor's Impact Two Hundred. Oh really? That's yeah. like I don't think anyone's ever said that's their favorite skate, or one of them. Like, he really liked those. I I had a pair. That was a long. That, like when you first started skating, or what? Yeah, I think they were like two hundred bucks. <laughs> That's awesome. That's like um, ninety eight or something. You know, like Josh Petty used to do UFOs in them. Yeah, I mean that's when you would have been coming to Austin. You would have had those impacts. Uh -huh. Um, Chava wants to know what is your favorite tricks, bro. Back Royale. Back Anything Royale. Else? <laughs> right now, I've been really having fun with Soyals and um, like really trying to dial them in. But to be honest, I've just kind of had like a uh, like a '90s mentality where I kind of just only want to really do tricks that I would do kind of in those times and skate that yeah. way. So it's a lot of like old school and just basic, just basic skating, like basic tricks, like and doing them over and over until they feel like they're the best version of the trick I've ever done. So Frank Stoner, I had a conversation with him the other day and he says the best trick to, is in skating is true soyal. What do you think about that statement? Like, 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 like true spin alley -oop, soil. Like a like a top side or far side one? No, like not top side. Like, just in like just normal alley. -oop. Oh, okay, okay. True spin. Uh, he thinks that's the best trick. That's what he said. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought we were just talking about like my own personal yeah well i'm just asking you what your opinion oh, is on the best trick best just trick? me asking you opinion um i think a good alley-oop soul on a key nice. 
on a K throw. I, okay, just threw it. He just added to it. Yeah. Like, if, if I, like, I'll always respect a good alley oop soul, like, like a solid alley oop soul. Like, I like seeing them. And Chavo wants to know, like, your favorite switch up, too, because I know you did a lot of switch ups back in the day, a lot of like step over switch ups. You and Ryan Northway both did a lot of those. Um, <laughs> Do you do you still do those types of tricks? And like, what was or is your favorite switch up? <laughs> you know what? If you know what? If I find like a fun switch up to do all the time is just like a front side to miss route where it's like budget style. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like that's always just kind they of look like cool a, too. A fun one to do. <laughs> I, like I, I don't ever do it seriously, but like they're fun to do. Like. I don't know why, just the feeling of the flow of it. Um, and here, we got a good question from Johnny Caves. How do you start your mornings on Daisy Skate? Do you have a routine before skating? Uh, man, it, it, you know, it really depends on my environment. If I'm in like a chill environment, um, if I'm staying in a place like stable, then what I actually like to do and what I've been doing the last few days that has been just like making me feel incredible is like I, I run to this park nearby and then I go to this bench and then I like massage my legs from the feet to the like thigh and I find like pressure points and like points where there's pain, but I, but I massage from the, the ankles all the way, like finding points in my shins that hurt and around my knees and in my thighs, I'll just freaking stick my elbows right in there and like, uh, do that. So I like do that. And then I, and then I just like punch the hell out of my legs for a while. Um, to get the like circulation of that going. And then I do like knee rotations and then hip rotations. And then I do just some like stretching, just some kind of like basic stretching. And then I like to um, go to like stair sets and run up and down them, but in different styles like crossing legs and lately I've been experimenting with walking backwards downstairs, but like accurately, not like, you know, like clumsily. And doing all of this, I find really um, wakes my legs up and gives them an awareness because if you just go straight to doing some like crazy shit, and your legs aren't like really awake, you know, it's like a recipe for hurting yourself. Oh, yeah, and I sure. find, and I find that if I do everything that I just shared with you and some running consciously, like moving my legs, then I like, by the time I get to skating, I can just immediately start going at it. And I just feel more confident. So that's been my uh, routine as of the last week. <laughs> okay. See, I didn't, I didn't realize that was your routine, but obviously it's a newer routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what okay. I'm saying. Like, like I'm stable in one place and I have the, the free time that allows me to go do all that stuff in this moment. But it's not always, you know, it's not always the case. Um, right I but mean, I, you are a vagabond yeah but i i some i ultimately too i like to run in nature and stretch while i'm running in nature for a couple hours and then go skating okay yeah i was on that routine for like a year um we'd California. love it here it's all nature so you could do all sorts of stretching out in the woods <laughs> <laughs> um and we got let me see another legend in the house miguel ramos no says, way roberto true spin front torque both ways hubba hideout 
<laughs> yeah. And you did that. Oh, Miguel. Oh, Miguel. Man, fuck. I hope. Man, I don't know where you are, but I love you, dude. <laughs> When's the last time you saw Miguel? Maybe. Maybe. Mar March, maybe. And that's Or when you went to his his compound there. In yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really I think it spot. was like it was either like February or March, so it's been a super long time. Yeah, that was that was seems like it would be really fun to hang out with Miguel at that ramp uh, facility. It's another like Ricardo's spot, a dream, a skate a skater's dream paradise, yeah, right? Like it really is. <laughs> And Miguel's like the fucking silver surfer, dude. <laughs> He's like the smoothest fucking ramp, one of the smoothest ramp skaters, like I know. Oh, he is absolutely amazing. You know, watching him skate that park in Cape Bradillas there in Puerto Rico, you know, that, that mm -hmm. cocky park in his hometown. I mean, it's amazing how he flows. Yeah. Uh, they even, even like watching Blading Cups and, you know, whatever. Like, I mean, such a good such a good ramps park skater incredible yeah, yeah. Uh, he's he's such a pleasure just to watch and then and but then like we would also be in like the front yard skating like curbs and just having fun so i miss those sessions <laughs> rad so we're getting close to the two hour mark which is kind of where i try to limit these podcasts so if anyone in the live chat Has any more questions for Robert? Go ahead and get those in so we can address them. Um, I wanted to go over a couple things coming up here with the show. So next Monday, we're not doing a podcast, but I'm going to have a special Halloween show because it's Halloween with Frank Stoner. So tune in for that uh, if you're around. The following Monday after that, I'm having a podcast with Jason Howard. So that's one of your old homies, right? Uh, the, uh, the OGest of the homies. Uh, right. He's, so the, that's, he's the original, the original homie. <laughs> so that's going to be Monday, November 7th, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Right here, Jason Howard will be on the show. Uh, another show I've been doing on this channel is Let's Talk Rollerblading, which has changed the format. But me and Frank did two episodes of it, and the way that show works is we cover five topics in the show. We discuss those topics. The next show I'm going to be doing with with um with oh I just had a uh, with Lawrence Ingram for Fifty Fifty Back to Blading Sequence Magazine back in the day. We're going to have five topics. We're going to discuss those on the show. So that should be good. We're going to do one with Frank again on Halloween as well. If you have people you'd like to see in Let's Talk Rollerblading on this channel, go ahead and post that in the comments below. If you have any topics you'd like to discuss on this on that show, go ahead and post those in the comments below. Chiaki Now, Ito. Chiaki Ito. Is that's, Chiaki... I'm just... I'm just... You were just saying right now... Oh, that's who you want me to yeah. talk, let's talk rollerblading to. Chiaki Ito. Yes. Okay. I haven't talked to Chiaki Ito in quite some time, but I should definitely hit him up. Because yes, you should. That would be you a should. good. I want to know what he's doing. Yeah, a couple of those old Japanese guys, like Hiro and stuff like that. Um, Adam Bender's in the house. Look at that. Oh man, he says, "I hope I you're said doing I well." I said, "I got a new drug, and it's the bomb. It's called Run Back Home and Hug Your Mom." <laughs> 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 oh, this is like the most legendary skaters to be in a live chat. Like a lot, like a lot. I mean, we have some you know good people in here, but we have a lot of people in this live chat. Really, I cool. love you, Adam. And Jan, well, uh, for for Rob, what did you do with your Mustang from the '90s? My my dad actually sold it to Matt Murphy, and Matt Murphy from the Bay Area. Um. And he drove it for a while. And then I think maybe he sold it. I, I, I can't remember what he did with it. <clears throat> awesome. I remember that car now that he mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> but that's, I mean, you, that's been gone for a long time, right? I mean, what do you yeah, yeah. Like? Long, long time. So 
you know, you're about to, you're in Quebec right now. We've established you're going to leave soon to go back to California. Um, what, like, what are your plans for the rest of the year? Like, you're going to stay put in one place. Do you have some places you want to visit already? And then moving into next year, you've talked about going back to blading camp. Do you have any, like, have you made any future plans so far? Uh, no. But I'm trying to actually get back to Blading Camp in April. Okay. And then the summer as well. So maybe you'll become a regular at Blading Camp moving into the future. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I presently, I, yeah, I'm invited. I'm invited to become a regular. That's really cool. It's like a really awesome family to be part of. It, dude, yawn. You have to go, dude. I really want to. I hopefully I can make it. It's just you know, it requires money. It's one thing I don't have. So, but the one thing you need to get there, I don't really have it. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, and let me see. I mean, that's pretty much. I pretty much out of questions for you on your trip and stuff. But I did want to know. Did you actually, you didn't really do any street skating on your trip in Europe? Just a couple times, like that one time in Portugal, did you street skate uh, at all, right? Mainly just park skated. Mainly park. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't street skated really in like a long time. And uh, I just hadn't felt like it really, to be honest. Is there a reason? Like, is there, like <clears throat> a certain feeling? about it that no it's honestly i guess the only reason i can share is i i've been focused on different uh areas of my skating mm -hmm. yeah like i begin to get really focused on wanting to skate differently and that requires like a lot of attention and energy and focus to like re uh recondition your body after it's done something for so long in the same way like i just wanted to really change my skating and um so all my attention and focus has like been there i've been wanting to have a different experience with it mm -hmm. yeah well it makes sense yeah um i mean now that you had an 80 setup too you'll probably be doing even more experimenting right mm -hmm. so i put up a link to robert's instagram you can go ahead and follow robert at robert earth on instagram to follow his adventures in skating and his traveling lifestyle and you know, see what he's going to be up to the rest of the year. Adam Bender says he wants to go running by the water with you when you get back to the bay. Oh, I and, like that. I would like that too. And Michael Martino says, isn't Chiaki skating again? I believe he is skating. And I think like a bunch of old school guys, a like hero is skating as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to definitely hit up the Japanese guys and see what's going on. Yeah, dude. Get, get, on some, of those, get some of them on the channel. Um, there's always, uh, you know, with some of them, there's a language barrier. So, uh, we'll see who I can get on here. Who's willing to, to talk. Uh, but yeah, I really, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's always really fun talking with you. Yes. And if you're just <clears throat> tuning in at the very end, Robert and I do have potential plans for meeting up here, possibly this week, maybe skating in Montreal with Sandro Timoteo. Um, um yawn just yawn just fucking do it come all right so let me uh i'll check the weather we'll make sure the days are dry and i'll get to you soon i'm making those plans but expect to see at least some photos of us skating with sandra <laughs> timoteo if not a short video um and maybe robert trying out some sways for those yeah. who asked about the sways now if you do want to support this channel, you like these shows, make sure to hit the like button, leave comments, questions, share these videos with your friends. Uh, you can subscribe to this channel through YouTube and you can become a Patreon member. On the Patreon page, I have merchandise. I have my cups. 
Uh, I th want to thank Mike Martino for both joining this channel and ordering merchandise this week. Thank you so much for supporting Dead and Outblading, Michael. I really appreciate and it. And thank you for and continuing to skate, Michael, and continuing to skate good. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, like I said, follow Robert on Instagram. I do have the link to the, his Instagram in the description below. I have a link to Blading Camp, so you can check that out. I have a link to my social media. I have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I've been posting lots of reels from back in the day, crazy tricks. You can check those out on Instagram. You can check those out on YouTube, too. Um, and, well, we got one last question. Do you want to answer it, Robert? Of course. From Dan M., what does the new skating style experience look like? Your new skating style that you're focusing on. For me, it's just... I, I just feel myself moving in a more relaxed direction. But the day that I, oh, wait, no, Dan. Okay. It's, it's hard. I don't know. It's more of like my own internal experience of it. So it's kind of hard to explain, but just more relaxed and simplistic. Yeah. More relaxed and simplistic. Well, I'll I think, see if I can try to document it. Huh? I'll see if I can try to document yeah, your, yeah, yeah. your new style. Yeah. <laughs> I um, mean, it, it's not even really a new style. It's just me adjusting the way I'm skating. Maybe it won't even show outwardly. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I, you know I'll let you know in, yeah. in real life. Um, and Sandro's excited about our potential Montreal trip. Bort Nick Punk says, thank you for rollerblading. Yes. Thank you, thank Robert. You for, thank you You've for rollerblading. A very important part of skating, the history of skating, and my skating life. You know, we've known each other for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm so glad we get to continue to do this and that you're still in the game making yeah, things well, happen. It's fun. And, and definitely, we're definitely meeting up this week. So, anyway, thank everybody here who can't join us for live chat for being here and joining us thanks to everyone who's watching this not in live chat just watching this video or listening to it on the podcast and if you are listening to it on the podcast go ahead and leave a review on the apple podcast services or any of those five stars if you like if you like the show so yeah <laughs> thanks and so wait, much i want to say one more thing yeah go ahead i want to thank all the rollerbladers from the 90s that are coming back that haven't skated in like 20 to 25 years but are coming back into it and skating again thank you thank you for coming back get your friends to come back if they are not if they're like sucked into family and work life get them to figure out how to make time for it and do it and skate together in the parks together because that's what's been happening here lately and it's mm -hmm. so fun like, that's amazing i've been seeing it happen all over the place now which is really cool yeah and last one from bortnik punk lake oven holds a special place in my heart rob g was a huge part of that so this is someone who was at lake oven which is really cool nice yeah, and if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when I put new videos up. Robert, what were we going to say? Oh, man. I don't know. Just Lake Owen was a huge part of my life. Like, wow. I, yeah. I guess nothing. <laughs> but <like> that. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to go ahead and say goodbye to everybody who's joined us today. We love you very much. Thanks for being part of our discussion, being part of the Rollerblading family. Thank you, Robert, again for being on the show. Thank you I look for forward to you. seeing you all. You are welcome. You're welcome, Robert. I look forward to seeing everyone back here very soon on the Dead and YouTube channel. Lots of content coming out like we discussed and some other shows. I have a bunch of stuff I've been editing, different things I've been throwing on, different stories. So again, I really appreciate it everyone tuning in i'm going to try to play this little in-screen video to see if it actually works so peace out everybody